So if any of you want to check out the learning goals, success criteria, they're there. There seems to be a stray bracket with the success criteria. I don't know why. Um, so logarithms. Recall the natural form of logarithms, and that is that we the idea of logarithms have come about so that we have a way of solving an exponential where x is in the power. So we're solving a function where x is in the power because we can't rearrange this without logarithms. So hopefully you recall that if ax equals y, a to the power of x equals y, then we can write that down as log base a of y is equal to x. So the perfect thing here that we can get x out as a subject of the formula. That's what logarithms does for us. And that means, of course, that 2 to the power of x equals 8 gives us the form log base 2 is equal to x. And, of course, we can solve that. That's equal to 3. And 3 to the power of x equals 8 gives us the form log base 3 of 8 equals x. And that's not as easy to solve. It's some number between 1 and 2. 3 squared is 9, so it's a little bit less than 2. But you can put log base 3 of 8 in your calculator. I'm hoping you all know how to get log base A of B on your calculators, um, which I conveniently have up here. <laughs> so just to remind you, um, actually, you can do it from the math menu. So this is the shortcut menu there. If you click on F4 to go into math, then you've got log A, B there, and you can type in your base and your value. So make sure that you do. Um, so a couple of properties of logs that, again, you've seen before. A to the power of x equals y has the following properties. A is greater than zero. A can't be zero. It doesn't make sense. A can't really be one either because then one to the power of x just equals one. So it's not an exponential function then. And A can be negative, but negative A values create oscillating functions. They're not the exponentials that we're studying. So for what we're doing, A is greater than zero and it's not zero or one. Uh, y is greater than zero, so any positive number to any power will also be positive. Um, so whatever happens here, you put in any x and you'll get a y that's greater than zero, but x on the other hand can be anything. And we've seen this in the graphical form. So here's a really rough graph, and an exponential function looks like that. This is my y-axis, this is my x-axis. A has to be, you just have to accept this one. But y is greater than zero, have a look at that blue line, it's always above the x-axis. So it's always positive. Y is always positive, but x can be anything. X is any number along there. So you've seen that representation graphically anyway. What does that mean for the inverse function? This log is the inverse function. We've rolled it around. Um, so if x equals log base a of y, what do we know about x, y, and a? Anyone have a guess? A, first of all, A is greater than zero. And you can have log base one of something, but it doesn't make sense. So A is greater than zero and doesn't equal one. I know that Y has to be greater than zero. You cannot do log of a negative number. We've spoken about that. And X can be anything. But just keep in mind that this typically is flipped. So usually we have y equals log base a of x. And that means that this becomes, so that becomes x and this becomes y. So in a standard log function, we rearrange it and we swap the values of x and y because y is always a dependent variable and x is always independent. You will get a stays the same, but y is greater than zero becomes x has to be greater than zero. The thing inside the log has to be greater than zero. A um, couple of definitions you are aware of, that log of x means log base 10 of x, and ln x means log base e of x. Any other base has to be represented by actually showing the base. So that's something you should be aware of. The two shortcut buttons you have on your calculator, so we'll typically work on those, and I've shown you how to get anything else in your calculator. Um, e to the power of x and natural log of x are inverse operations. Just like if you squared a number, you could take a square root to return back to where you started. This is the same thing here. If you do e to the power of a number, well then you take log of the answer and you'll go back to where you started. So that's what happens there. What it means, and this is, um, this one's fairly easy to play with, but this one's a bit harder. So you need to be aware of these rules. Um, log of e to the x is just equal to x. 
because we're inversing, so we're doing log of the e to the x, but, and e to the power of log x is just equal to x as well. So this one here, we can use one of the log laws and bring the x out the front, and you'll see how that works. This one here, um, it's a bit harder to see, but because they're inverse, if you get used to that, we're there. And the last thing I need to remember is the log laws. And I'm gonna talk about change of age quickly um, in a second, but they're the log laws. So I'm just gonna have a quick look. I can't remember all kinds of these on the formula sheet. Uh, log base A of X plus log base A of Y is log base A of X1. The first one is. The second one is. The third one is. And the change of base formula is. So you're pretty good. The formula sheet has this one, this one, this one, and this one here. So you've got access to all those in your exam. These two you don't, but these two hopefully you've seen. Um, so if you add two logs together with the same base, you multiply the bits inside the logs. If you subtract, you divide inside the log. If you've got log base um, of something to a power, you can bring that power out the front. If you have m to the power negative one, this one's in your textbook, but it's really just a specialized case of the uh, of log law three. The negative one comes out the front, making it negative. And log base A of one is zero, log base A of A is one. So they're the things we've learnt before, and you've seen them. You can have a look at the proofs in your textbook. But here is the change of base formula. So this is pretty important. It hasn't been important for years, but now you have a tech-free exam. So all of a sudden it becomes important that you know how to change the base. Um, obviously, in a tech-active exam, you have a button, log base A of B, but this might be important in a tech-free exam. So if you want to determine log base A of M, but you want it to be in base B, not base A, here is the proof for this formula, and that's on the formula sheet. So log base A of M is equal to log base E of M over log base B of A. And that's the, um, that's the reversion there. So the way they've done it, there's a few ways you can do it. Convert that into exponential form, take a log base B of both sides, which you can do because it's an equation, and you can do the same thing. Use that log law to bring the power down. Divide through so you've got y is equal to that. And then we all we already know that y was equal to that originally, so we put that into that conversion. That's the change of base rule. That's they're all fairly simple rules, and your application is generally um, involves simple familiar questions, but there's quite a lot of different rules, so you just have to get used to it. And this is going to be one of those exercises you've got to practice it and make sure that you can do all these things. That's cool. Yeah, good. Focus is on. Excellent. Um, okay. I'd like to run through some examples. Um, I might do example one and two now, and then I might do example three a little bit later in the lesson because one and two are the simple familiar examples. Three is a little bit harder, and it gives some of you a chance to have a go at three if you'd like to. So example one, A, is a simplification question, and it can be done using the log laws, and then it should simplify quite nicely, I hope. Uh, so we've got 2 plus log base 5 of 10 minus log base 5 of 2. How do we simplify that? Two plus log base five of ten over two, which is two plus log base five of five. What's log base five of five? Um, one. Good. So we get two plus, and that's equal to three. So what's going to happen? Obviously, in real life, this kind of thing doesn't really come up very often. But in an exam, in your exam next term, and in your external exam, almost certainly going to be a question like that. So you may as well get to know this stuff. It may come up in your external exam. That would be a really good um, tech-free multiple choice question. Expect to see things like that. Okay, question B is 3 log base 4 of x minus 5 log base 4 of x plus 2 log base 
bee. I don't think that's meant to be a bee. Let's make that a four as well. Uh, log base four of x. So how do I simplify this? So shall we pop in the powers in? Log base four of x cubed minus log base four of x to the five plus log base four of x squared, yeah? Now how do we simplify that? So I'll zoom in on this. We have to be a bit careful here. Um, because if you ignore that, if you add those two together, you would multiply the x to the power of five by the x to the power of two. But we have to do addition and subtraction in the order they come. So this thing is negative, which means that that's divided by. This thing is positive, which means that's a multiplier. So what we get, and you could do it one stage at a time to get the same answer, but you get log base 4 of x cubed times x squared over x to the power of 5. Because this is the negative thing, so it's in the, power, in the denominator, whereas these two things are positive, so they're in the numerator. And what does that simplify down to be? Log base 4 of 1, which equals... Zero. Zero, good. Okay, 4 to the power of what equals 1? 4 to the power of 4 is like 256 or something, so be careful with that. And then question C, which I'll just do here. Natural log of... Root x over the natural log of x. Any papers how we might set this one out? So? Okay, let's write this down as log of x to the power of a half over log of x. Remember, don't be fooled. Some people might look at this and go, oh, that's right, if you divide logs, you subtract. But that's the opposite way around. If we subtract logs, then we divide inside. So it's easy to find that that's suggesting you subtract root x minus x. Not the case in this case, but how do I simplify the numerator? Okay, so we've got that rule that brings the power out the front. So we get a half log x over log x. And what happens now? Log x and log x cancel out, we're left with a half. It doesn't matter what x is, this will always be this, this is a common question. I've pulled this from a past paper. This is the type of thing that pops up because they're looking to test your ability to work with the log laws, and they want you to feel under pressure and do this using the wrong law. They want you to come up with this. And students will do it. Root x minus x. Because you're thinking division and subtraction relate together, but it's the wrong order. Has to be subtraction of the logs creates division inside the logs, not division of the logs creates subtraction inside the logs. So just be careful. And again, your fluency will come just through practicing these and making sure, again, you don't have, you don't have to memorize any log laws. Have them written on a page next to you and just refer to them all the time. Don't do anything that's not a log law. Um, okay, example two we're going to do quickly, and then I've got a few people to teach speak to about a couple of things. So, log base five, this, this is solving equations, by the way, um, and again, came up in, this is in the sample IA2. If you want to download that, you can. It's in both mock external exams, and this type of question was in every single exam that I saw as an endorser from every other school that I endorsed. So, this is going to be in your exam, let's be honest. You need to know how to solve equations. Log base 5 minus log base x equals log of 25. How am I going to do that? 5 over x to start with. Once you've got, it's, that's exactly right. Once you get to a point where you've got log of something equals log of something, it has to be true that those two things must be equal. So you can just drop the log. That's it. Um, this is log by 10. So a good way of possibly setting that out would be to say, raise both sides to the power of 10 and then the log and the 10 power cancel out. But you don't really need to do that. Five, hopefully you could do this yourself. 
equals 25x, x equals 5 over 25, which equals 1 fifth. Yeah? So x is 1 fifth. And b, log base 3 of x squared equals 3 of x plus 2. Any takers? How are we going to solve that? What, is, what does it look like? It looks like a what, sir? It looks a lot like a quadratic. Be, and you've seen these types of questions in the exponential stuff. So be aware, if you get a question that has the same thing appearing twice, just take a moment to think, is this actually quadratic in some way? So let me just show you where this leads. So if I rearrange this now, I get log base 3 of x squared minus log base 3x minus 2 equals 0. If you're feeling particularly fluent and confident, you don't need to do my next step, but I'm going to do the next step, and that will be to let some other thing, y I'm going to use, equal log base 3 of x, and then I get this, y squared minus y minus 2 equals zero. Now it really looks like a quadratic. If you get a question like this in unit three or four, they are not testing your skills to solve quadratics. So it will almost certainly lead to a quadratic that is easy to factorise and easy to solve. And often, although I don't think it is in this case because I think I've made that mistake, but often you'll find it actually leads to something related, your answers relate to three a lot of the time because they want to have that relationship so you get nice whole number answers, but not in this case. Why? Minus 2, y plus 1 equals 0. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so therefore, null factor theorem says that y equals 2 or y equals negative 1. I've just let each bracket equal 0 because one of them must be 0. And now I can substitute back in. So I get, therefore, that log base 3 of x is equal to 2 or log base 3 of x is equal to negative 1. Can I have both of those answers? Got negative issues, do I? Okay, well, let's rearrange this one back into this one positive, back into exponential form. It's an exponential. <laughs> x equals 3 squared. Don't forget that rearrangement, so x equals 9. So doesn't, isn't it also true over here that x equals 3 to the power of negative 1, which equals 1 third? So just be careful. In a logarithm, um, x can't be negative, but the thing on the end can be. Okay, so just be, be a bit careful with your... And it's fine, because you might sit there and go, hold on a second, I've got to be careful here. Maybe it can't be a negative, but hopefully you'll go through with your answer and you'll realise that it can be. So always go through with your answer until you've definitely proven to yourself it can't be. Um, and as Kira turns up, that's it, we're done. No, we're not quite done. I'm going to do example three a little bit later, so you've got some time to do it. Um, I'll just pause this.